and uh, welcome to the Predictable B2B Success Podcast, which is brought to you by Sproutwith.com. I'm Vinay Koshi, and you, more importantly, are a business owner or executive looking to grow your business predictably via empathetic content and conversations, which is why I interview guests who share how they go about achieving that themselves and or for others. Our guest today is John Lee. Now, John, uh, you are the founder of custommobile.app, which makes uh, beautifully branded apps for podcasters who want to turn their fans to friends and uh, build a bit of a listener-supported content business. Is that the gist of the company? Okay, excellent. John, tell us a little bit about your background and fill in the gaps, because what I gave was a very brief intro. <laughs> Sure. I'm a solopreneur of a couple of years, two or three years really at this point. Mm -hmm. So very new to the whole entrepreneurship world. I do have a day job. Um, I'm a software product manager by day. And then in on nights and weekends, I've been trying to build up my own business on the side and, and custom mobile data app is the latest iteration of that project. Um, we are the first agency of its kind, custom building, beautifully branded and professional mobile apps for podcasters at an affordable price. And so we're excited to get the word out and uh, present the value of owning the mobile channel to as many podcasters as we can. So thank mm -hmm. you, Vinay, for having us on your show. No worries. John, how did you get to uh, this, this idea of building custom apps for podcasters? It's been a process, to be honest with you. So I said three years ago, I started my entrepreneurial journey and I started, I think where a lot of people start, I had an idea for an app and I thought it was the greatest idea in the world. I hired an agency out in South Carolina and I started working with them, spent a lot of money, borrowed a lot of money and started building what I thought would be one of the first social podcast apps back in the day. Mm -hmm. So th the idea here would be you as a listener could you know, follow all your favorite shows as usual but right, right where you're listening, you would also see the social feeds of your show. So Vinay, I would see the, your Twitter feed right beside the episode details. So if I were listening and I heard something I want to talk to you about, I could just tweet at you right there, reply to a tweet mm -hmm. and start a conversation. I wasn't trying to build my own social network. I was just trying to pull in the existing social platforms of the shows right into the listening experience so I as a listener could engage and start conversations. Mm -hmm. While I, it took me a long time to build that with the agency and again um, it costs a lot of money and but in that time <clears throat> I saw other social podcast apps come and go and this happened again and again and I got a, a sinking feeling in my stomach like oh am I barking up the wrong tree here. Mm -hmm. This is it came to the point where I realized this was not going to work. Um, there have been enough examples come and go in the market while I'm building my own version of this thing that I was convinced it wasn't going to work. So about this time last year, I had to make a hard decision and I decided to pivot and not launch with that version, but rather I was thinking we had this technology. I don't see podcasters having their own mobile apps it cost me so much money to make my own mobile app. How could anyone afford to make a mobile app for their business, let alone their, their show? And I thought, is there a way that we can white label our technology and make it really easy and affordable for anyone to have a podcast app, especially podcasts? We were building a podcast app. It just made sense. And that's when the journey again started anew and we started exploring that idea. Uh, we're validating that idea for a long time. And we came to the point where it, it seemed worth the try. And so mm -hmm. we relaunched the business in January as a custom software as a service agency, if you um, mm -hmm. want to call it that, and have been trying to get the word out since. And now I've uh, taken the next step in my marketing efforts. In the beginning, I was really just focused on Twitter, just trying to get the word out on Twitter, reaching out to individuals, just direct lead generation on Twitter. And since then I've expanded and learned a lot from trial and error, seen what's worked, what hasn't worked. And my latest iteration is I'm trying to get on podcasts to share my personal story, 
but also get in front of listeners who um, are also my potential customers. And yeah, this has proven to be a, quite a reliable way of generating leads and converting prospects to customers. John, that's quite a journey, but what would you say is your personal area of strength? I'm a product person. That's what I do during the day. I love thinking of product ideas that solve real world problems through technology. And I think that's my, where my interests are, my passion is, and I hope to keep doing this for a long time. Certainly. And what would you say in that area of strength is something that businesses don't know, but should? Just don't know, but should. I well, Personally, I'm not a gadget person. I don't mm -hmm. like, I don't adopt the latest technology. I have an old phone. And in general, I think people are resistant to adding another thing to think about and have to use on a daily basis. So just because you build something doesn't mean they'll come. Building yeah. as hard as it is, is almost the easy part. Um, getting people to use your product and making sure that what you're building is actually something that people will use, not just say they want to use mm -hmm. or say they will use, but will actually use is a huge challenge and well worth investing the time in upfront to validate before you build anything. I dove in head first in the deep end and learned the hard way. And I'm still really, to be honest with you, I'm still trying to find my bearings mm. and see if this is going to work. So I'm so still in the middle of the journey. Yeah. Okay. You're getting people or your pivot really came about as you asked people if they'd be interested in building out an app specifically for the podcast. And I, I believe you've got enough customers or, or attention to decide that this would be a path to go down, which is uh, terrific in, in and of itself. But really, uh, when you're talking to a potential client, you're really having a conversation around how to monetize their podcast. Would, would that be correct? Yes. I think a lot of the conversations I'm having are educating podcasters, content creators about the simple benefits of having a mobile app. Mm -hmm. I think my theory is because it hasn't been an option for most small business people in general, let alone podcasters, it's not an option on the table. And so there's a little bit of education involved as to why do businesses make their mobile, make mobile apps anyway? Why does Target mm -hmm. have a mobile app? Why does Starbucks have a mobile app? And so that's interesting. That's, I'm happy to share the benefits of owning that mobile channel from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. But you, I think you hit the nail on the head. What uh, one, of the, one of the phrases that I put in my notes and I, I tell myself almost every day is every conversion starts with a conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wrote that down. I was like, oh, it's got a nice ring to it, but it's true. I find the most reliable conversions happen after an initial conversation. And that's why I've been finding, e even talking to podcast hosts, a more reliable way for me to convert prospects to customers than anything I've done up to this point on social media. Mm -hmm. I've done everything organically. I haven't done any paid advertising or marketing. Everything's been organic, but the most reliable method I've found is to have real, even short, but real conversations. That's been for me, the most reliable way to convert. So you said it's not an option on the table for most podcasters. That that's, sounds fair. And certainly the costs and the effort going into building a mobile app can seem intimidating. But um, I'm curious, why, why invest in the mobile app? For me in particular, I do have a bunch of apps. Some I don't use very regularly. And so mm -hmm. my philosophy is if I don't, use it very often it shouldn't be on my phone it's just a distraction and another bit of clutter and i know that at least with some podcasts if not uh, a good deal of them there is a fair bit of um, churn if you will and that listeners listen to a few episodes they might go on to find something else they might come back again uh, and so on and so forth so uh, i guess foremost at the in, in a potential podcasters mine and certainly mine as well is it worth the time and the effort yeah that's the real question and the way i try to answer that question is i'm a listener you're a listener we answered that question as listeners mm -hmm. and right as a listener i want options and i prefer to use 
uh, a podcatcher like Google Play, Google Apps, yeah. sorry, Google Podcasts. I use yeah. it as my general podcast player. But from a business perspective, from the podcaster's perspective, getting at least some listeners to download your app is super valuable because mm -hmm. you own that relationship on their mobile device. And that's the primary device that they're listening on. If you can get at least some listeners listening to your content on your own app, then you control the user experience from that point forward. You can engage them further. You can start conversations with them through your own app. You can serve them other content that's not in the podcast, articles, video. Ultimately, the purpose is to convert them from a listener into a customer. And that can look like many different things. It can be that listener becoming a patron on Patreon. It can be that listener buying your merchandise. If you were doing live shows back in the day, and maybe again soon, you could sell them tickets to your live shows or events. That is what I believe builds a sustainable business and a sustainable podcast is when listeners are converting into supporters and customers. And that can't happen on Spotify. It can't happen on Apple Podcasts. Well, now it can, but it's very expensive on Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. They'll take 30% of whatever yeah. your subscription is. But if it's happening on your website or on your own mobile app, you're getting 100% of that support. And I think serious podcasters know that. They have an intuition of that. And they're always driving the listeners to their websites. Mm -hmm. Because that's, again, that's where you further engage your audience. You get to know them better. And then you can convert them into supporters and customers. So I so mm. Okay. I guess a, a benchmark or a criteria to even look at getting a podcast, uh, sorry, a, a mobile app developed for your podcast would be, is there enough traffic coming to my website? Uh, and hopefully if your podcast is your main channel of getting your message out there, that should be doing most of the heavy lifting for you. I think, I think that and as a business person, I think a website is the first thing you definitely want to get mm -hmm. because you need a home on the web. And you need a place to invite your listeners to yeah. and host them and convert them. But if you have the resources and now because we've made it affordable, everyone should have mm -hmm. access to the mobile channel as well. It's like your mobile home. You have your main mm -hmm. home and then you've got your mobile home. And it's another place to invite your listeners. And I was going to say something. The benefit of a mobile app really, even on top of the website though, is it's on the device of your listener. It's right in their pocket. So they've got immediate access. So it's almost like the door to your home mm -hmm. on the device of your listener. So whatever a podcaster can do to get them to download the door to your home onto their device is well worth it. And some of these incentives can be exclusive content. Yeah. Only content that they can get on the app is a way to incentivize listeners to download. And your passionate listeners, if they're really passionate about the content, will want more. And that's one way I've seen. Community is another way I've seen where podcasters want to start their own community, not on a third-party platform where they can't control that community, but on their own platform. Gather email addresses, talk to their listeners directly anytime they want to and, and seed conversations among their listeners. You can build a community on your website or on your mobile app. And they're your people from that point forward. It's like my Patreon membership. My patrons are my patrons and I can start conversations and communicate and have, yeah, I can communicate with them whenever I want to. I can, I, I don't, I'm not beholden to a third party who can potentially shut me down or, and I've had some experience like that as well, all through the learning process of our dependency on these third party platforms to grow our audiences when primarily we should be focused on growing our own audiences as well. Not neglecting those other third party social media platforms, but really prioritizing building our own email lists, our own audiences. So we're as autonomous and independent as possible and strong going forward. Um, yeah, those are the ideas that come to my mind at the moment. Now, do podcasters struggle with viewing the podcast as a business? In, in from your so. experience? Yep. Yeah, I think so. So a lot of podcasters, as you're aware, are very new, new to the medium, are trying it out and are really focused on just getting their content out there, publishing as widely as possible and growing an audience. And 
I don't think very many have taken the next step to thinking about how do I turn this into, how do I turn my passion into a business? How do I get, have my passion pay for itself and make this a sustainable operation? Can I quit my job at some point and do this full time? That may be a desire, but how to go about doing that maybe isn't at the front of uh, podcasters' minds from the beginning. So yeah, having podcasters think of themselves as business people is also a challenge. And to, to that point, I think you don't need a big audience to have a sustainable business. I, I think of small businesses on our main streets. They don't have nearly as many customers, I don't think, as what we would think are like online businesses that have thousands and thousands of customers. These small businesses are sustainable and they feed the family and send their kids to school with a, a local audience and loyal customers. So I, even for podcasts, I think you don't need that hundreds of thousands of downloads to have a sustainable business on your hands. I think converting those listeners, even if it's a smaller sized audience into actual customers is the key. If you mm -hmm. can convert one out of a, maybe a hundred downloads into a paying customer, that may be enough to have the podcast pay for itself or even pay you as its host. And so it's all about conversion, not so much about the, the size of the audience, I think. And again, conversion happens on your own platforms. If we're looking at potentially getting a mobile app done up for a podcast, what should we be, what should we be thinking of? Because it's one thing to go uh, mobile app. Yes, I could uh, own the user experience, potentially monetize my podcast. And you start seeing dollar signs, but I think there's a few steps uh, in before that, that we need to address. So what would those be? Again, just going back to the conversion and the monetization piece of it, what is the purpose of the mobile app? I think that mm -hmm. should be really clear in the mind of the podcaster. Yeah. And it goes in line with what is the purpose of my website? Yeah. So making sure that your website and your mobile app have a clear call to action and exposing that as big and as easily as possible for your listener to take. So once the purpose of the app is set, um, our platform, for example, is fully customizable. So we can, we can house all your content in one place. A lot of podcasters use podcasting as just one channel of distributing their content. Mm -hmm. um, you publish your video as well, maybe on YouTube or a streaming service. So there's video content, there's audio, there's written content usually with episodes and maybe a blog tied to the episode. All that can be put in the same space. So as a listener, I can access all of it in the same place. So we can do that, bring all your content together under one roof. Other features we have are around social and community. Again, I mentioned you can build your community in the app as well. So we can you can let listeners talk to one another and talk to you, start conversations, post comments on a social wall. We have that feature as well. So they can start conversations with each other and get feedback from one another. And then going to the conversion piece, we can expose any call to action that you have on your website. Wh whatever that target is that you're going after, whether it be buying merchandise, we can expose your uh, merchandise onto the app so listeners can purchase your products inside the app. Or we can point them to your Patreon page so they can convert to becoming a patron right from the app. Whatever your, whatever your uh, calls to action is, we can make that clear and part of the user experience. So it's just a tap away from listening to the content to uh, converting into a customer. In, in, in thinking about um, monetizing, you mentioned a few things like merchandise, certainly potentially selling premium episodes or, or get content, for example. Are there other things that you find work particularly well with, with the podcasting space? I think community is really sticky. An idea that I've been having over the past couple of weeks is, and, and what something I've experienced myself mm -hmm. is people will come for content and good content. You'll get visitors um, to your show and like to your business because of interest in the, the thing that you're, you're offering but they'll stay for community and community is what makes a membership or a listenership sticky. 
And the example I've been thinking about lately, just because we've signed up, is there's a local, a new local climbing gym that opened up mm -hmm. back in February. My son and I signed up a couple of weeks ago. And an, interest, an interesting thing we've noticed is a lot of the climbers come in pairs or in small groups or they meet each other there and they're taking turns climbing, they're chatting between turns. And there's a very social aspect to climbing, which I didn't mm -hmm. know about before we started. And I realized we've come because we want to learn how to climb. And I'm sure these people started because they wanted to learn how to climb and get fit as part of their health routine. But once you start making friends at the gym, once you start forming friendships and starting conversations, getting to know people, I feel like people get stuck in that forming friendships becomes really sticky for that membership business. And I can see people staying for months, if not years, because if your friends are there, mm -hmm. it's almost a done deal. It becomes a very sticky situation where you're, you're, you're just there. And it's not just for, I've seen this principle apply just across the board and thinking about churches, for example, now that we're fully vaccinated, we're going to start looking for a church to attend in Pittsburgh. And I feel like yeah, church is a great example where people go maybe for some inspiration and for some good content to lift themselves up. But then once you start forming friendships, then people get stuck in for a long time mm -hmm. in those kinds of uh, membership. It's, yeah, it's a membership. It's a community. So people, will, again, will come for the content, but stay for community. And so figuring out a way to help your listeners feel like they're a part of a community, I think is huge for retention and retention is key for building a successful business. Uh, so if I'm hearing you correctly, podcasters should really be not just publishing, not just be of the mindset uh, that we're, we're publishers in, in an audio format or a video and audio format, but really community builders. Uh, in that at the heart of their podcast is a cause that they are trying to rally people around. And that would be the basis for giving them a space to interact with each other, which would be the mobile app. I think so, yeah. It, it yeah. may be something that podcasters are not considering. And you can tell mm -hmm. me more as a podcaster, but from, what, from my perspective, as I look across different businesses and different mm -hmm. domains, it's what I'm seeing. I think community, especially now, even maybe even more so than before, people crave it. They don't know how to participate in it. And the options available are, are not satisfying. So I think social media is available. It's easy to access, but maybe it's not satisfying for people. I don't use it very much for anything other than marketing my business. It's not part of my normal routine. Um, and I feel like a lot of people feel the same way from just the, what I'm hearing, people are burned out of, with social media. They find the interaction shallow, uh, unfulfilling, not meaningful yeah. and are craving yeah, real conversations and real interactions in real life, but digital is second best. And maybe if content creators thought more as much about producing great content as forming communities around that content and getting to know their listeners and building uh, a space for them to be a part of a community. I think that would be really beneficial, not just for the listeners, but for the podcast as well. Mm -hmm. Now in building community, there are, it brings to mind this idea of forums and uh, discussion boards and things of that nature, which there are plenty of examples of on the internet, but given that people probably listening to podcasts as they commute or they travel to work or something of that nature, would it make sense to engage in a similar format via their, via the mobile app or their, at least their phone devices, which is probably what they're listening to these podcasts on? Yeah. For myself, when I'm listening to a podcast on a run or something, it's not every time I'm listening that I want to engage the show. Yeah. It happens sometimes. And when it happens, I do take the effort to stop and look for that show's Twitter feed and I'll make a comment or like the episode they they posted up and I'll do that, but it's not very often. And you're right. I don't think most listeners are going to be engaging in conversations as they're consuming the content. Mm -hmm. But 
if after they've listened to an episode and they want to learn more or um, ask a question, then having a space there like a forum or a discussion board or some place for them to easily reach out and ask that question, I think is important. Giving your, those listeners that want to engage further a space to do that. And for the podcaster, again, those interactions are the most precious interactions. The, those listeners are the most engaged and getting to know them as friends, like turning your listeners into friends or fans to friends is, I, I think, key to building a sustainable business, again, of supporters. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a listener-supported show, that's the way to do it. I guess the default way of trying to build uh, some level of community would be email, but that tends to be more of, more of a monologue <laughs> than, than a dialogue. And it's something I've, I personally have been wrestling with because uh, I would like for a more interactive type of ongoing conversation with those who do uh, subscribe and email. I just don't feel is the right way to do it because I, I personally don't necessarily read or listen, reply to all my emails, even the newsletters that I subscribe to. Having the option of putting down a comment via audio would be much easier. I do the idea of even giving people the uh, option of using video in, in a response. And, and we've certainly seen a, an increase in the use of it via emails. Uh, and that makes for a, uh, a nice change when, when you do get a personalized message via, via uh, email that includes a video clip. So, so certainly those are options that are playing on my mind. Would a mobile app potentially be able to accommodate those options? Yeah, so our social wall feature allows folks to post comments just like you would on Twitter. You can attach mm -hmm. an image, you can attach a video, you can attach an audio file to that post okay. and it just becomes another post on the wall and people can comment on it, like it, interact mm -hmm. with it. You can all, In our app, we also have a real-time chat feature where listeners can direct message each other and there's a video chat feature as well, so you can add video if you want to. But those are baked into the app and can be used out of the box. You were talking about email, I think, is better than nothing. I think email sure. allows for two-way conversation, which is better than just publishing your content on through Apple Podcasts or something. They can't respond to you, but at least through email, they have the option. They could hit reply. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good place to start. But yeah, like you said... I think having a more interactive forum and a space designed for conversation is even better. Is there a, another aspect of building out a potential app that uh, podcasters should uh, consider? Oh, can you see the question here? Is there another aspect of uh, uh, that the podcasters should consider when looking to build out a uh, mobile app for their podcast? Not that comes to mind immediately. Um, I think just to re re reiterate again, mm -hmm. knowing the purpose of the app and taking the time to think about the purpose of your show, really, your yeah. what are the goals of your show, I think is the first place to start. And then thinking of how an app can contribute toward you achieving the goal for your show. I, I notice you are looking to run a, a summit. Is that correct? Podwork summit? I'm not running that. I'm participating in that summit okay. on right. Saturday. I'm just on a panel okay. with another tech entrepreneur there. That summit is on podcast networks, how to start a podcast okay. network and how to join. So it's all about the business around podcast networks. And I found more appetite among podcast networks for an app than individual podcasters. So I wanted to be a part of that and try to meet more networks who are thinking about monetizing their shows. There are a couple of steps forward from i think the indie podcaster because mm -hmm. they're already organizing and they're thinking about getting sponsors for the group the network and yeah i think an, an app would definitely benefit a network as well for sure so when you say podcast networks just for those who may not be very familiar with the term does that mean a series of podcasts produced by the same company or, or individual but perhaps related topics? 
Yeah, uh, it's a loose term. There are a range of networks. Like you said, a network could be one podcast producing multiple shows. Mm -hmm. So it's just a network of shows from the same producer. It can be a loose collective of independent podcasts that are just, they're there to cross promote and help each other grow each other's audiences. They're sharing episodes of other podcasts on their feeds and sharing their audience. So they're all growing together through cross promotion. That's more of a looser cross promotional network. And there are very professional branded networks like Gimlet, for example, would be a network of shows under one branded umbrella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it runs the gamut, but I think, again, they're at a stage where they're thinking in business terms and organizing and thinking about as a collective, how do we monetize our collective? Yeah, having a website again and having a mobile app just makes a lot of sense. I know I didn't ask you this before we started, but would it make sense to look at perhaps uh, one of these um, apps? I don't know if you have uh, that available uh, to you right now, but uh, would it help to show people what it could look and feel like? Yeah, I could probably just go to the app store. Let me see if I can share my screen. Yep. So I didn't prepare for this. <laughs> no, that's fine. We Sometimes we do things on the fly. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I can jump right go. into it. One of our clients is the Trek Geeks Network. So I'll look up their app. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it would seem that people with podcast networks, as you mentioned, those who focus in on an, an existing community, like Star Trek fans, for example, or those who, are, who revolve around a particular brand or product, would be a good fit for a mobile app for their podcasts, would that be correct? As opposed to say someone who is, has a, a podcast around a, a, a service, which is a bit more intangible. I wouldn't say that actually, even as a service provider, you want your listeners to contact you, right? That's mm -hmm. probably the call to action and yeah. contact me about my services. That's something you would definitely want to expose in the app. Uh, alongside your content so they have they're one touch away from getting in touch with you mm -hmm. which is the foundation of your business so i think any business that's using content as a way to market their business would benefit from owning their own mobile app and when i look around at, at all the medium-sized and large businesses out there they've all got a mobile app for that very reason to convert their prospects into customers on their devices it's just yeah it's very valuable as a business asset but here's the Trek Gigs Network. It's, it's a very simple app that they've built. They haven't utilized the community feature, but the app aggregates all the different shows in their network. They've got a bunch of shows. This app um, allows listeners to discover the other shows in the network. So it's a discovery tool as well. Right. And they can click through and, and see all the episodes. They've posted their merchandise here so that... Mm -hmm. Listeners can come in and buy Trek Geeks merchandise right inside the app. And they've added their, I think this is their link tree page. So they've got other links to other properties on the web that they're associated with in the app. So that, so listeners can navigate mm -hmm. to other places. What I don't see a screenshot for here is they've some, got something here called AppCast. This is their exclusive RSS feed just for the app. So this is how they're getting right. listeners to download the app. It's content that they can only find here and nowhere else. And that's the, the way Trek Geeks is inviting folks to download their app, it looks like. So would that be available only if they have the app or uh, would they have to, would it be like gated content that they would need to pay for or something of that nature? It's it, We can gate anything inside the app behind a login screen, but this this private RSS feed is just their RSS feed that they haven't published or okay. made public. So it's a private feed that we pull in just into the app. So only app users have access to it. 
Mm -hmm. And that's one so, way of providing exclusive content. Are, are there aspects of community building that you have seen to work especially as opposed to other communities? We're just getting started with the community features and I've been promoting it to our clients. Um, I haven't seen that much real world evidence at the moment, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's something definitely to keep in mind. I'd love to see our podcast clients promoting the community aspects of their apps and seeing the conversations that are started and, and what benefits they bring. But we're still very early days in seeing how communities can form. And so mm -hmm. it would be, it's a great time to jump in because everything is new and it, it'll be a great place and time to learn how to do it. I'm trying to think of the name of the audio app that's uh, taken uh, taken on uh, become quite popular cloud no clubhouse Club, uh, that's right yep uh, is there the opportunity for rooms or, or conversations that you're part of to be brought into uh, the app because uh, that, that i think has been a challenge for some podcasters and that they're having these great conversations on Clubhouse, mm. but not being able to link it to their specific podcast or make it part of it has been a bit of a challenge. So they've, from the conversations I've had, felt that they were almost doing things in a different space and not necessarily related or being able to be connected. That is the benefit of having your conversation within your own property, yeah. like an app. Uh, we don't have the ability right now to have audio only conversations in, in a conference group type of setting, but that's definitely a potential feature we could add in the future. So it, it is, as you said, a fairly new space. It's evolving. It's uh, what's the space development, at least uh, at this point in time, though it does make for some nice monetization features. I, I know we've covered a fair bit, but is there an aspect that you feel we haven't highlighted as yet, but should? Not that comes to mind immediately. I'd love for podcasters, again, just to consider themselves, not just as content creators, mm -hmm. but as small business owners and entrepreneurs and to yeah, think of their shows as not the end in itself, but maybe a means to something more sustainable, a business, a way to turn your passion into a sustainable business. Um, yeah, so defining the goals of that. What I've found as I've been looking for, who are my target customers? Who's my target audience? I thought a lot about that in the beginning and I've been experimenting even now. What I've landed on is I think my target customers are actually small business owners that are using podcasting as just one marketing channel. It's just one part of their overall marketing strategy. Um, yeah, so encouraging podcasters to think of their podcast as just one channel, maybe the one they're starting with now, yeah. but over, over the long run, how are they going, how, how will they grow their podcast to do a content business? Um, and how are they going to get there? Yeah. And content is comes in many different forms, right? Not just one. So thinking of themselves more broadly as a content business owner, I think is a good start. John, if you were listening to this podcast episode, what would you say would be your top takeaway? Top takeaway. If I were a podcaster, I am a content business owner and I need mm -hmm. to treat my, my podcast like a business, not just as a show, not focus just on growing my audience, but think also and really consider how do I convert my audience into customers? Cause that's, mm -hmm. what's going to make me a sustainable business. I think a second point might be, how do I start building a community around my content? Because visitors and listeners will come for my content, but they'll stay for community. If I can build a robust, encouraging, real, authentic community around my content, that's going to be huge for my show. And it will mean my show will last for the long run if I can achieve that. I think a third takeaway would be consider how a mobile app could contribute to your goals as a content business owner now and in the future. And we've made it affordable for everyone to custom build and brand their own mobile app 
our plan start at just six dollars a month for the indie podcasters so we've made it accessible to everyone so come check us out we're at custommobile.app Mm -hmm. And John, if uh, listeners are curious, want to find out more or to connect with you, where would you recommend they head to? Yeah, they can find us at custommobile.app and they can reach me directly at hello at custommobile.app. But all of our information is there. You can check out our different tiers for hobbyists and uh, more business-minded folks and networks. And you can see the full list of features we have in the app to customize to your particular use case. Excellent. John, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Vinay, for the time and the opportunity. I really appreciate it.